All right, I th think I did everything right here. I don't know if I wait a second. I want to check then. Oh, is this going to let me change what I wanted to do? Uh, I don't think this is going to let me change what I wanted to change. So I know on the Twitch side of things, we're, we're, we're good. I think it's the YouTube side. I might be on just the regular internal mic, which is fine. That's, that's okay. I got a little distracted. I was looking at my, um, I was trying to do my downloads of the, and so, uh, I didn't quite, uh, hit the on, you know, the go I button at, at the time I wanted to, but it's all good. Right now I'm in the process of downloading some stuff. Um, and then we'll get the, uh, the podcast going here in a minute. Once this downloads. <clears throat> nope. That is not the one I wanted. This is the one I wanted. <sighs> that. Uh, yep. So I want to do the podcast in like five minutes. I just want to get on here real quick, um, get the stream going up and running, which it looks like everything's good. So we're good with that. And I'm just going to grab the points real quick. And then, uh, cause I want to get that stuff back out there. I don't want people to think that I totally fell off the rocker, which I did last week. I, I know I missed the entry list. I know I missed, I think I missed everything with Dega and I think I missed most of Kansas stuff too. So I do apologize about that, but, um, it's been a, it's been an eventful last, uh, week and a half or so. Um, kind of, as I was alluding on the, on the, on the podcast two weeks ago, we, we, we've had a lot of craziness going on, uh, for me, um, you know, between real life and, and, and some other stuff, it's just been, it's been nutty. So, uh, uh, most of you guys know I'm usually right on top of this stuff. We usually have everything pretty much ready to go all the time, but the last two weeks have been a little bit of a challenge. So that's why I wanted to, when I knew I couldn't hit the podcast on, on Thursday and Friday, like I wanted to, I figured I was going to do Monday. Cause then we could do Kansas. We could recap that. And then we could get, um, any other news that broke during the week, which we'll talk about, um, did I just do the drivers again? I think I just did the drivers again. Yeah, I did the driver place. Hey, when I do that. I gotta get back to <sighs> Come on. Back to um to the owner points, but there's tons of Darlington paint schemes. I, I almost kind of want to do a throwback page, but I don't know. A, I don't know what my page limit is with this this new package I have, so I got to kind of figure that out as we go. And, and then I got to do a feature article, which I'll probably do on Wednesday when the next time I'm, I'm not at work. Um, I'll probably do my feature article then. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, man. So like I said, I'm just downloading um, the driver and owner points from Kansas, and then I'll get those on the page later. I just wanted to grab this before I, I actually get into the um, 
into the podcast because I want to be able to reference it during the podcast. And at least now I'll have access to it. <laughs> I see NASCAR is now uh, tweeting out about them being in uh, Rocket League. So it looks like Chase Elliott's going to be in it. Uh, I, yeah, I saw Bubba, Ryan Newman. I don't know who else is in it. I just see those three cars in particular. Looks like Newman, Bubba, and Chase. I heard it was nine cars. Interesting for those of you that that play Rocket League. Um, there'll be three different NASCARs in there. I was having a lot of fun the other day. They they did something with the NFL draft, and instead of the the ball, which kind of is more like soccer oriented, it was uh, a football. And you were able to carry the football imaginatively on top of your car, kind of like you could carry the football and, and score a touchdown with it. Uh, you get seven points, or if you just knock the ball in, I think it was three. Uh, so that was kind of cool. That was kind of a, a neat little thing they're doing. Uh, and now Rocket League is going to have NASCAR in it starting Thursday. So uh, that'll be kind of cool. Actually, let me click on the link here. Maybe I can figure out um, – Exactly who's going to be available. So it's. Uh, you're going to have Newman. You're going to have Eric Amarola. Joey Logano. Kurt Busch. Uh, Austin Dillon. Chase Elliott. Eric Jones. Kyle Busch. And Bubba Wallace. So the NASCAR 2021 fan pack will be available for 2,000 credits in the game, which is money, so you're going to have to spend money on this, obviously. Uh, and, then, and then in addition, a NASCAR trail will be available beginning for free on May 6th. The pack, the pack marks the start of a multi-year collaboration between uh, Sonics and NASCAR and will be available ahead of the NASCAR Cup Series race taking place at Darlington on May 9th. The NASCAR 2021 fan pack will return throughout the year around future NASCAR events. So I don't know exactly. So basically they picked. So basically they picked three from each manufacturer. I don't know if, if the three they picked in each manufacturer really makes sense, but um I guess I guess those were the, the drivers and the teams that were able to give the rights up for it. They look weird, honestly. They don't look like actual NASCAR stock cars in the sense that they just don't look they don't look like the, the cars. They they sort of look a little bit more like a, a mod a heavily modded Gen four or five. They don't look like the Gen six cars at all. So whatever. I say at this point, I've wasted enough time. Let's get into the podcast and I already hit the button for the new episode, so we'll uh, do that here in a second. And we're going to um, – this episode is going to open – the way I want to do it, we're, we're going to do it a certain way. And then um, then we'll get going. Um, let me just grab my stuff first. That – do, 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 do. 
that. <sighs> it's kind of, uh, gloomy Monday out here in uh, northern Jersey. I guess it's going to rain again today. Which would explain why I didn't want to go wash my car today. Oh, oh man. <laughs> do, do, do. All right, now that I got all the normal stuff out of the way, let's get let's get into it. I want to do this. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Bob here, the Coochie's Corner Podcast, coming to you with another live episode here on YouTube and on Twitch, and also wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We are going to break down the races at Talladega Super Speedway. We'll talk about Jeb Burton's big win in the Xfinity Series. We'll also talk about the big win for Brad Keselowski at Talladega on on uh, two Sundays ago. Then we'll talk about this weekend, the trucks. Uh, we're in Kansas, so uh, another uh, exciting race. But unfortunately, it looked like we were getting a certain finish. We looked like we were going to get one of our good friends at Circle B Diecast. We we're going to get a truck in victory lane there. And uh, we had a late, late race caution that kind of screwed everything up. And we ended up with Kyle Busch winning the race on Saturday in the truck series. And then yesterday, Kyle Busch comes out and steals one late in the race to win on Sunday at Kansas, winning the appropriately named Bushy McBush race 400 at Kansas Speedway. And uh, Kyle Busch picking up his first win of the 2021 Cup season. And uh, sweeping the weekend as well. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the latest news and all that. But we're going to uh, we're going to start the episode on the other side of this uh, commercial break with uh, a little remembrance. We found out yesterday morning that uh, former NASCAR Xfinity Series driver and a former team owner in the uh, K and N E Series, which is now known as Arkham Menards East, uh, Eric McClure passed away at the age of forty two uh, yesterday morning. Uh, Eric was a, uh, driver, like I said, in the Xfinity series race there for multiple seasons for a few different teams, including Johnny Davis motorsports. He was over at TriStar motorsports. Uh, I believe he tried doing a little bit on his own as well. He drove AGL, uh, racing, I believe at one time as well. So, uh, Eric McClure passed away at the age of 42 and, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about him on the other side of this break, but, uh, just our thoughts and prayers are with his family and uh, friends. And I know there's a lot of people that, um, that I know um, that work in the garage area and stuff that had a really a lot of nice things to say about Eric. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that on the other side of this break. Um, but again, our heart, heartfelt uh, condolences to Eric McClure's family. Uh, I know he has, uh, I believe seven kids uh, from his previous mar marriage. And um, I know his fiance, uh, Kiara was a, uh, posted that the heartbreaking news uh, yesterday morning. So uh, Eric McClure, 42 uh, years old. And uh, unfortunately we lost him yesterday morning. So we'll continue on with the crew cheese corner podcast on the other side of this break.
All right, guys, we're back here on the Coochie's Corner podcast. And and as I kind of teased in the open, we're going to start with our kind of our remembrance of Eric McClure. And 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 like I said in the open, he was, uh, you know, 42 years old. And when we found out yesterday morning, he passed away. Um, you know, obviously, Eric was, like I said, an Xfinity Series driver. He competed for multiple different teams in the in the in the sport, uh, drove for Johnny Davis. He drove for uh, himself for a little bit. Drove for TriStar Motorsports, JGL. Uh, he, he drove for a, a couple different teams. Had a longtime supporter in, in Hefty, uh, where sort of his in Reynolds Wrap. That company was his uh, primary sponsor for sponsor for multiple seasons. Um, and, and you know the one thing that that became apparent to me, which I sort of knew a little bit, but I think it kind of rung home yesterday, was just how many people had so many great things to say about Eric McClure and. You know, here's a guy that, you know, for many people was his, was their start into the sport. Um, you know, Eric was the kind of guy that was, you know, give the shirt off his back to people when, when, when he could. Um, I know about four or five different people um, that if it wasn't for Eric McClure, they wouldn't be where they are today in the sport. Um, so I think that speaks volumes to Eric's contributions to the sport. Uh, I think any time that, you know, you find out when someone passes, you know, a lot of times you find out more about the person and and you sit there and you kind of wish that you knew more about them or you knew them more personally or or something like that. But I think with with Eric, I mean, you know, I I only got to meet him, I think, once or twice, maybe once for sure uh, in the garage area. But just how many people would go up to him, talk to him, you know, and, and he was just he was a kind of guy that he would hang out in the garage area. He didn't really, you know, he would have a conversation with anybody, you know, that walked up to him, uh, and said, hello, whatever he, he was that kind of a person, you know, he was just a really down to earth guy. Um, uh, like I said, would give the shirt off his back to anybody, uh, and just, just started so many different careers. I mean, there's people that I had no idea they even had a connection with Eric McClure and, and yesterday reading some of those stories were, was very, uh, you know, it's just gut wrenching. Cause you know, that, that, that guy had been through a lot. I mean, you know, for those of you that might know or might not know, Eric had a, uh, a really messy kind of situation with his ex-wife that was getting aired out publicly, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, I know there was a lot of things that were said and, 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 you know, I'm not getting into his personal life. I mean, that's, that's none of my business. It's really none of our business. What happened with that whole situation. But I know, I know that situation wasn't easy for him. I know he had some, some demons because of that. Um, and it just, it's hard. It's hard to say what, you know, what caused him to to pass away. Unfortunately, uh, we don't know the reason. Um, and again, it's really none of our business. What the reason was, I know, I know Eric post NASCAR had some health issues. Um, and and which was kind of what drove him away from racing a little bit was because he had these health issues and he had, you know, this, this situation going with his, with his ex-wife and stuff. So there's a lot more to the story, um, you know, obviously, but, um, you know, what you do is you remember the man for who he was. I mean, like I said, I, I know four or five people that posted some really nice stories and, and again, mentioned how without Eric's help, without them, you know, he would invite people in as guests, of his and let him like work with the team uh, and kind of get to see like what working in a NASCAR race team was like, you know, and, and there's so many of these guys that do this. I mean, it's not just Eric McClure. It's, it's, you know, Carl long, it's, you know, TriStar motorsports when they were in existence, there was a lot of these little teams. I mean, even Mike Harmon, you look at, uh, at uh, Morgan Shepard, there's a lot of teams in that garage area that bring people along and bring them into this sport and honestly, without those people, uh, we wouldn't have some of the, some of these guys that are working for the bigger teams wouldn't have gotten their opportunity unless it was for guys like an Eric McClure, like a Morgan Shepard, like a Mike Harmon. Um, you know, say what you want about Rick Ware, but Rick Ware is providing opportunities for people to get in into the sport or and or keep jobs. Um, so so like it or dislike it, whatever you want about the guys that are the field fillers in the back of the field. A lot of these guys are using, you know, volunteer crews uh, and trying to give people opportunities that want to start in this sport. And I think, you know, one of the things that I, I thought was uh, really a poignant conversation was 
uh, Dave Moody was talking about uh, about it on on his serious show. You know, he was talking about how you know if you're really interested in getting into the sport, and this is one thing I, I tell anyone that's come to me and said, "Hey, I'm interested in getting into NASCAR or, or covering NASCAR." What advice do you have for me? And I tell people all the time, what you have to do is you have to go find one of these smaller underfunded teams. It's just like when I got started out doing this stuff, you know, one of the first things I did was I picked on, on the smaller teams and and I don't mean pick on, like I, I made fun of them or anything. What I mean is I picked on covering those teams, covering their stories, because that's how you get noticed. That's how people like, wow, this guy really knows what he's doing. Now for me, I'm doing this for myself. I'm not looking to, you know, I, maybe when I was, 10 years ago, maybe when I was 22 or I was 21, I thought I could make a, a name for myself in NASCAR. And I really thought that I could do this professionally. Um, but you know, the more I looked at it, the more I understood the economy was, was not in a great spot 10 years ago, uh, 10, 11 years ago, we just came out of that recession. And, and, and I knew that the NASCAR jobs were drying up. You know, you could see that, that train coming a mile away. And there's, you know, a lot of people that want to do what, a lot of, you know, what some of these guys are doing and, and you look and, and it's, it's hard. I mean, it's grunt work that you have to do in order to get in. I mean, there's guys that I know that, that are in that garage area right now that are basically not get paid. They go to the track, they show up, they're paying their own, you know, they're renting a, a car or they're driving their own vehicle. They're pay, they're paying for gas. They're paying for a hotel. They're, they're paying to get the, the hard you know, the, the hard cards, or pit passes, whatever, to get in the garage area. They're paying for all that stuff out of their own pocket. The teams won't even – some of the teams won't provide it. Some teams will. It depends on what level, and it depends on funding and things like that. But, you know, some of these people are spending thousands and thousands of their own dollars to be at the racetrack to get that opportunity, to get that chance. And I think that's the thing that sometimes people – when you mention that to them, their eyes get open. They're like, I got to do this in order to get there. But it's just like anything in life. If you want to be successful at something, you have to put in the work at the beginning. You know, it's not all of a sudden, once you become famous, you become successful, all of a sudden, now you have to put in the work is no, you have to put the work in from day one and you have to have that work ethic. You have to have that, you know, that, um, that motivation, that self, you have to be self-motivated in order to go out and do any of these things. You know, whether you want to be a crew guy, whether you want to be in the media, whether you want to be a podcasting host, whatever you want to do in life, you have to put in the work, you have to put in the time. And if you just come in and just walk into something and say, well, you know, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, that's what I'm going to do. Then you're not going to be successful at it. And people are going to know that you're not successful at it because you're just coming in and, and winging it every single time. You know, and that's the difference between, you know, the people that say they want to do something and the people that are doing it, you know, and, 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 and that's what it is. I mean, there's teams right now that are look that would take someone on tomorrow if, if you find the right people, but you got, again, you got to have the work ethic. You got to have the self-motivation. You got to have the drive. And a lot of times when people find out that you're not going to make money at this right at the beginning and that when you do make money, it's, it. Yeah, and, and you start out on some of these smaller teams, the money isn't, isn't great. You know, you're not getting paid thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. You're not making 60, $70,000 just, you know, working, you know, tires or something. You know, a lot of these smaller teams, you're doing this stuff for free and they give you the most simplistic stuff to do, but you're basically their bitch. And, 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 and you know, I think anyone that's worked in the garage knows this for a fact that you're a bitch when you're, when you're starting out and you're, you know, you're doing all the grunt work, you're getting the, you know, the crew chief is coffee or, and you're, you know, you're doing this, you're breaking the ice to put in the cool box to cool the cars down all the different little mundane jobs. That's what you're doing. And you're not getting a dollar for it. You're just getting the experience of saying, Hey, I was, you know, I was a crew guy on, you know, car on Long's race car. I was a crew guy on Eric McClure's car. That's, that's what you're getting in return for doing all that grunt work. You know, and if you're, if you work hard, you do what you're asked to do, right. You might earn a chance to stay on that team and and get a position and maybe make a little bit of money down the road. But you know, that's, that's how it starts. Um, And that's what guys like Eric McClure did for, you know, lots of people. And I'm not saying it's everybody in the garage, 
but there's probably 40, 50 people that he's probably helped get into the sport that I, you know, that, that I saw messages of yesterday. And there was about four or five of them that I actually know. So it, it's just, it's a sad story. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, you know, our heartfelt condolences and thoughts and prayers are with his family, his, his daughters, uh, who he had with his, his previous marriage, and obviously his fiance, uh, Kiara, uh, just, just heartbreaking news, you know? And, and like I said, Eric was, was such a good guy. And, and like I said, I, I, I only met him once very brief conversation, met him through a, uh, a friend actually of mine that, um, works on a, on a team. And, uh, I know how, how much he, uh, liked Eric and, you know, he was one of the guys that he always talked to every weekend. He was, he was at the track and, and stuff like that. And Eric was always very, uh, very nice and courteous, uh, to him and, and several other people in the garage area. So, um, like I said, just a, just a tough loss for the racing community. And, um, yes, that is, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the McClure's, uh, used to own the four car and the cup series that Kodak Chevrolet that was driven by Sturro Morrow and Ernie Irvin and a host of other drivers, Mike Skinner, Robbie Gordon, you know, a whole, whole bunch of drivers. Bobby Hamilton was in that car. Um, so there was, there was a lot of really good drivers in that car. And then obviously Eric, uh, you know, had racing in his blood, grew up with it and, uh, went and started his own kind of path and, was able to uh, carve out a nice several year career in the Xfinity series. He started on a K and N team, um, which he was a part owner of. So um, just a, just a sad deal all the way around there for, for everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one more break. And then on the other side of this break, we will break down the Talladega races. We will talk about Brad Keselowski's big win two Sundays ago. And also Jeb Burton's win in the rain shortened, Ag Pro 300. This is the Crew Chiefs Corner Podcast, hosted by Bobby Bailey. All right, let's see. That is in. Let's change this.
All right, everybody, this is Bobby Bailey back here on the Coochie's Corner podcast. And now we're going to break down our Talladega race weekend. So uh, we had the Xfinity cars out there on Saturday. Um, You know, I know originally the race weekend didn't look too promising as far as Saturday was concerned because there was like a 90% chance of rain or something crazy like that. Um, But all in all, we were able to get the race in. um, And it was kind of like one of those weird talladega xfinity races you know you couldn't really figure out what was going to happen um you knew the call cars were going to be strong i mean justin haley i think was going for four in a row three in a row i'm sorry at talladega um you know he was looking for that third win in a row there and uh pick up i think his fourth or fifth straight plate race win um but it was his teammate jeb burton that picks up his first career win i know it was a little rain shortened i know uh they didn't get the whole race in, but you know what? A win's a win. You'll take them any way you can get them. And, and Jeb is a kind of kid who has really scratched and clawed to get everything he has gotten in his racing career. I mean, I remember when he was coming up uh, driving for uh, Turner Scott Motorsports, driving in their uh, truck, you know, driving that Ford truck with uh, Arrowhead uh, Tobacco as a sponsor. And, you know, remember him winning races in that truck and, you know, looking like his career was on that trajectory to be in the Xfinity series. He started making some starts, uh, driving that 34 car again with Arrowhead as his sponsor. Um, and then the, then his entire deal sort of fell apart at the seams, you know, you know, uh, Turner Scott went out, um, you know, Jeb lost his sponsorship at the same time. And Jeb was sort of scratching and clawing to, to piece some stuff together. He had a little bit of money from state water heaters um, per year, um, you know, uh, uh, bed liners. He had some he had some deals, but he just never had a lot of funding. So he kind of took a step back. He started dry. He, he went back to the truck series, uh, drove, I think, for Mike Hillman uh, for a little bit. He was trying to start a team because he was recently ousted out of Jermaine because they were closing up the truck program uh, around that same time. And he went to go drive for Mike Hillman in a couple races in the 27 truck. Never really got that, that deal put together strong enough where they could go out and run really well. Uh, but they did well enough to get him uh, some seat time and some other vehicles. Uh, then he was able to put a deal together, to go drive for D- uh, Dale Jr. and Jr. Motorsports. And he was able to split two seasons over there with uh, Daniel Hemrick and some other drivers before that um, was able to drive some races. He had, again, some sponsorship from state water heaters. He was also able to, um, you know, get, get a partnership with Rocky boots. Uh, He was also got a deal with Alsco uniforms. So he had some sponsorship money from them. Um, And and then all of a sudden, you know, in the off season, we found out that he was selected to replace Ross Chastain in that number 10 car with Nutrien, uh, Nutrien uh, Ag Solutions as his primary sponsor. Uh, but he was able to to bring some of his other sponsors with him. LS Tractors, which was a company that sponsored him over at Junior Motorsports. They slid over. Um, you know, Nutrigen, uh, Nutrigen is doing some races. They're not doing all the races. They're doing probably, I'd say, the same amount they were doing with Ross, which is about 20-ish races of the season. And then the other 11 are sort of up the Jeb to have sponsorship for. But here you had basically half a season covered at junior. So these other races were basically just kind of like, you know, he could kind of figure out the 11 races. He didn't have to try to figure out a whole season because he had a primary sponsor. Um, so it really just, it panned out for him a lot better. He did a a much better job. Uh, and, and he was able to get that win, but you know, you look at Jeb, there was a lot of pressure on him this year. You know, he was over junior. He drove that eight car for two seasons. Um, didn't produce any wins. And that was, I think kind of the thing. A lot of people were like, man, maybe, maybe Jeb is, is pushing too hard. You know, maybe he's trying to go for it too much. Maybe he's trying to really push his luck and, and get it. But you know, you look at, um, by getting this win now, he's got that out of the way. There's no more monkey on his back. Um, and I think he can go out and compete the rest of this year and po- possibly win some other races. I think he's been close at some places. He's just hasn't, gotten the right opportunity to be in the right spot late in a race in order to win a ra- in order to win one. So he was finally able to do that, finally able to capture that elusive first win. And hopefully it's uh, the first of many for him. And, and, you know, he uh, 
competes and goes on to uh, compete for that championship later in the season out at Phoenix Raceway. So uh, a big win for him. And then you look at Brad Keselowski on Sunday, goes out and gets a huge win. Um, kind of ironic, we didn't have really a big wreck at Talladega uh, during the cup race. We, we just had a couple small incidences. Um, so you had the majority of the field there together late in the race. And, you know, Michael McDowell almost won again. I mean, here's a guy that, you know, before this year, I mean, everybody knew how good of a plate racer Michael McDowell was. But did you really notice how good he is after he's won the Daytona 500? You know, he had a pretty good run. He had a couple top tens. And now Talladega and was able to finish third. And I'd make the argument, had it not been for William Byron trying to block him, he probably could have won that race. He was in a he was in a really good spot to win that race on Sunday, uh, two Sundays ago. Um, had William Byron not thrown that block in the 24 car. So, uh, a good win for Brad, his first of the season, obviously that locks him in. And now we are getting closer and closer to, uh, having more and more, uh, guys locked in these playoffs. I think after, uh, the win on Sunday by Kyle Busch, uh, I should say really yesterday to so differentiate the Sundays, but after Kyle's win yesterday, we have 10 guys now that have victories this season. And it's just mind blowing that we've had 10 different winners in 12 races this season. It's uh pretty, pretty uh, crazy to think. And just, you're going to sit there at the end of this season and, and say, man, that damn Fox promo, they said it was the best season ever. What they know, <laughs> what they know, um, you know, it's just been a wild year. So now what we're going to do is going to get in Kansas. I'm not going to do a separate segment. We're just going to do it on one, um, you know, Saturday, the truck race. I mean, I, I watched a lot of it. Um, man, I was, I was hoping for anybody, but Kyle Busch, uh, John Hunter, Nima check, he had a good truck, Zane Smith, Sheldon Creed, both had really good trucks. They both kind of took themselves out of competition there late in the race, went it up with a late race restart and Kyle Busch was Kyle Busch. I mean, he had a bad restart. The one before that, um, with, with like, I, I want to say seven or eight to go. He had a terrible restart. Ross Chastain, you know, yarded the field basically. And Ross was coming to win the race, uh, or at least coming to get, you know, I think it was like two to go or something like that. And the caution came out and we went into overtime and, you know, Ross got jacked up from behind from his teammate, Bailey Curry. Um, actually Bailey didn't even get to his bumper. Bailey's truck got jacked from behind and couldn't even get there. So there was really no run that Ross could get. And, um, you know, I know Todd Gillen was trying to fight his way through the middle cause Todd wanted to win. Obviously, uh, all these guys want to win races no matter when they're in them. Uh, but Ross was out there trying to, to, to get that win. And, and he had a tire rub and, um, Kyle Busch was just able to drive around him and Zane Smith and just make, you know, make hay and, and went on to win, uh, his 61st career truck series win. So a big one for, for Kyle on Saturday, an early birthday present, the whole nine yards. And then Sunday's race, you know, if you're Kyle Larson, now this is two races this year that you should have won. If you look at it, you look at Kansas, these are two races you should have won. And he doesn't have anything to show for it. He, he had a, a, a bad uh, final restart. Uh, I was trying to get around Blaney, got into Blaney, almost wrecked Blaney. Blaney saved it. And uh, it really took them both out of contention to win the race. But it gave um, a wide open door for Kyle Busch and, and, Nobody could catch him. Kevin Har uh, Kevin Harvick rallied back to finish uh, in second after he had a, a, a pit road penalty and some other things going on there. So um, another another crazy Kansas final restart that determines the race and uh, a big win for Kyle Busch, his uh, first one of the season, first one of Ben Bayshore's uh, Cup Series career. So I'm sure he's excited about that and just absolutely wildness. Um, for for Kansas. So um, you know, who knows who knows what the future is gonna hold at Darlington if uh we had some crazy racing at Kansas. But um other 2021 news we just found out Rafa uh, Raphael Lessart is not going to be back in the 24 truck this season. Uh if you remember way back when this deal got announced it was a partial season season originally. Um uh, then it looked like they found some sponsorship to run the rest of the season. And then we got a report about a week ago, week and a half ago, that sponsorship was kind of falling through. And it sounds like it did finally fall through. 
Um, so it sounds like Raphael Lessart will not be back in the 24 starting uh, this weekend in the truck series. So we'll find out who that replacement driver will be uh, for Darlington. But, you know, it's kind of a, a tough deal there for Raphael Lessard um, and, and, you know, his his uh, his operation. So, uh, he'll be out of that seat and we'll find out who replaces him here in probably pretty short order. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, you know, they don't go and try to ring, a, a you know, the phone of Greg Biffle, who drove that truck, I think, last year. They don't try to, you know, put somebody in that truck that has some kind of veteran experience. I forget if Darlington's a, a part of the trip or not, which is the triple truck challenge. I, I forget if he's on the, if that's a trip race or not, but I'm sure I'll figure that out later on. But um, so that's breaking news. We had some more Darlington paint schemes released. Uh, a lot of them are on Facebook. I don't have a lot of them on the page yet, but uh, I'll get to that at some point this afternoon. Uh, you'll find the Darlington stuff on there. Um, but today we got the Ross Chastain, Jimmy Spencer throwback. Uh, McDonald's is going to be on the car. So sort of a neat uh, paint scheme there. And um, the other one was a AJ Allmendinger paint scheme, a uh, throwback to his own uh, 2014 Cup Series win, driving the 47 for JTG uh, Doherty Racing. And uh, that is... Uh, his throwback for this year uh, for, for Darlington for Wendinger. It's his 2014 throwback uh, to his Watkins Glen race winning scheme. A lot of guys are throwing it back to themselves. Ryan Blaney is doing a throwback to his late model days. Uh, Bowman's not doing one to him, but he's doing one to Greg Ives when Greg Ives was racing on a late model. Uh, that seam, that seafoam green. And uh, I guess that's a pink number on the door. Um, so that's an, another interesting one. There's a, there's a few of them that are kind of out there, but um, you can find all that stuff on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the crew chief, and you'll find all that stuff. So that pretty much does it for our podcast. I want to keep it nice and short and sweet uh, this week so that uh, we can get in all the stuff for, for Darlington next week. Hopefully we'll be on early ish in the week. I'm not really sure exactly when, but we'll be on, to cover all the, the, the happenings out at Darlington. Don't forget, we got the trucks, Xfinity, and Cup out there at Darlington Raceway this weekend. The Cup Series running the Goodyear 400. I believe the Xfinity race is called the Steakhouse Elite 200. And then the truck race is the Lift4Less.com 200 as well. So an interesting race weekend out at Darlington. Uh, I would say as far as Cup goes, I mean, there's a lot of guys that have – been knocking on the door this year. Um, you know, you still have Kevin Harvick who won there last year, Denny Hamlin who won there last year, still knocking on the door for wins this season. So I would say this is a good track for either one of them to, to crack the victory lane, uh, you know, score, um, you know, Chase Elliott ran pretty well there last year until he got run into a run over by Kyle Busch. I should say on elite race restart, which ended up benefiting Denny Hamlin. Um, so we'll see. There's a couple guys there. Um, I, I would say one of the guys that hasn't won this year stands your best shot to get the win this, this weekend. Then Xfinity. I mean, Austin Sindrick would be good. Uh, Brandon Jones had that epic battle with Denny Hamlin here last year, late in the season. Uh, I would say he'd be somebody to look out for, uh, as well. He's had some success here the last couple of years. So look out for Brandon Jones. And then the truck race, I mean, shoot, anybody, anybody that's a, a veteran driver, Matt Crafton, I would say, would be a good one. Uh, I know they struggled last week, but I'd say Crafton would be the guy I would go for. I think just a veteran guy, he's got, he's got the right frame of mind, worn out tires. I think that would be a good enough cause to pick um, Matt Crafton for the trucks. So that's all that's – all the, there is time for it today on the crew chiefs corner podcast. Thanks guys so much for tuning in. Thanks for all the support. Be sure to check us out on Facebook. All the social stuff's going to scroll here at the end of the credits. And also don't forget to check out the crew I am working on getting stuff uploaded uh, sometime this afternoon. We'll have uh, the page updated and then 
hopefully once the entry list and all that stuff comes out, we'll get it on the page as well. But check us out on Facebook, check us out on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and then also on TikTok. So we'll catch you next time. This is Crew Chiefs Corner Podcast. I'm Bobby Bailey. All right, and that's it. We'll see you guys uh, next week, and uh, have a great day, and enjoy the races this weekend.